let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the Elena backpack from I Think Sew Patterns. Um, I'm gonna go over how I decided to interface it, what I made it out of, and the changes we made to this front pocket. Um, I also added some like divided cargo pockets, these side water bottle holders, which probably would have been improved with elastic. So if you do this, maybe add that. And then we added this back slip pocket for a laptop and or iPad. This bag is massive and I am so excited to use it. So I hope you enjoy the video. Bye. Hi. But bye me. I am making quite a few changes to this bag and I'm sure I went over that in the intro. Um, I have been using my backpack for, I don't know, how old is that video? Like four years, so a very long time. And I decided it was time for an upgrade. So I have cut out a back panel from the lining piece using just waterproof canvas. Um, and then I've cut out this piece of foam, a lining piece, and an exterior piece, um, which is my exterior print. And this is going to be a very large back slip pocket. Um, that's something I really wish the backpack I have now had. So again, like I said, I'm making that change. Um, so I've got those three layers there. And I'm going to top stitch. I'm just going to use like a half inch seam allowance. I would say I cut this piece down maybe three and a half inches. Like I folded the main panel over by that much. But you could even make this piece um, kind of um, angled, swoopied if you wanted. Kind of like the Magdalena circle bag type thing. And then I'm gonna fold this edge over so that our foam is encased. Open those layers. And then I'll baste around the outer edge. And of course, top stitch there. And I even thought about like, you could add a zippered pocket to this back panel if you wanted to as well, like on top of it being this slip pocket. Um, but when I'm traveling on an airplane, I usually have Dorothy with me and carrying Dorothy and all the stuff we need, having one bag is perfect and then not having a lot of freehand to like get in and unzip it etc so I really wanted like the sleeve that I could put my iPad in if need be or even our um, boarding passes stuff like that so I thought this was kind of fun so go ahead and increase that stitch length I am using a cotton lycra for the exterior, so it's a little bunchy. I'm gonna take out this basting stitch because if I were to keep going, I'd have a weird wrinkle here. So I'm just gonna take out this basting stitch and then stretch that better. And this is why you should flip all the way around before you start. Mm -hmm. okay. And you could even quilt this back piece if you wanted to, or the whole backpack really. Let's 
you can see, because it's a knit, it's kind of rolling on me. Anyway, there we go. That's better. going to trim down the excess to match the exterior piece. Okay, and then for the back panel, I didn't want the entire thing to have that foam because it's going to be way too thick to sew through, but I also wanted the entire back piece to have that foam. So I just kind of have this small overlap of where the backpack slip pocket will sit um and I had this kind of scrap piece so what I'm gonna do is baste this down all the way so I'm just folding this line where the foam goes so that I can have a stitch line because you're not going to see the back panel I'm not worried about this stitching showing, you know, but I don't want that foam to be kind of loose. So that's why I'm stitching down across there. I mentioned earlier if you really wanted to you could add like some kind of zippered pocket to the section as well um, just to increase storage space you know okay so there's that and then before I attach everything I'm gonna fold to find my centers and make little snips because this bag is finished off with binding, you don't want to make your snips too big. But yeah, so then I'll just line up this back slip pocket, matching those notched corner pieces, or notched centers, I should say. We're a little off. It's okay. <laughs> about using a vinyl for the back side, but I just really like the way this periwinkle waterproof canvas kind of brings out the tower. So we're doing that. And then I'll just baste this in place, following the edge as close as possible. Again, this is finished off with binding, so we don't want to lose a ton of our seam allowance. straps to make. I have my grab handle here. I'm going to go ahead and place that. Figured may as well. Uh, so I'm going to measure three inches from the center. Make a mark. That is where my backpack straps are going to go. And those should be kind of at an angle, so that looks good. And so I'm just going to place this like half an inch from the center. 
and baste that in place. The webbing I'm using is from Cast Iron Handcrafted. It's such a pretty rainbow. And like, it is a lot of color, but it really matches the fabric nicely. So I'm going with it. One of the other changes that I'm making is I'm adding side pockets for like water bottles, cups, etc. Um, so I'm creating like a bound edge on this mesh. This is from By Annie. I purchased it from Zipper Valley, um, but I cut them to 11 inches wide by I believe like nine, 10 inches tall. So I'm just gonna do like a quarter inch seam allowance straight across that top. Um, and then I cut a I believe it's 1.75 piece of fabric for the top edge. You could totally do elastic for this, and I guess I maybe should have, so that it cinches a little bit better. I guess it's not technically too late. Oh well. And so this mesh, I think, can kind of start to fray if you're not careful. So top stitching it down into place and then folding over the edge to create that like bias. Probably if you're not using a knit fabric, you could probably iron and then fold it. And just top stitch it straight on. But I was also kind of thinking um, the more secure on that mesh, the better, so that it doesn't come undone with use. I'm gonna flip this over and top stitch. I think you could top stitch along the bottom and the top. I'm just gonna do kind of close to the bottom. And then I'm gonna do something similar on the bottom, but I want the bottom piece to be cut to the same size as my gusset and kind of bunch this up so it creates this like 3D pocket. And I've cut this wider um, so that it holds larger bottles, etc. but also when I'm putting it together, I can decide, you know, maybe this is a little wider than I actually want it. So I could even trim it down if need be. Stitch like the little shorter. I could probably also be using double sided tape for this. Oh, we'll get there, huh? It is 11 p.m. and I've worked a full day. But making something for myself always kind of gets me excited about sewing, um, especially when it's something I know I'll use. So I know a lot of times we talk about losing our sojo or inspiration, etc. So if you're having that issue, maybe find something you need to make and make something for yourself.
so I've grabbed my bottom gusset pieces. I'm gonna sew these together. I'm gonna start with the exterior. And then my lining. So this becomes the bottom seam of the bag and where I'm going to attach these pockets, more or less. So I'm going to butterfly open that stitch and just sew down each side. brainstorming where I want this and how to attach it so right now I've got it probably an inch and a quarter from the top edge well, it's about an inch actually which I think is totally fine And I'm just going to see, like, is this unnecessarily large? Is it going to work? So, yeah, I think that'll actually work quite nicely because it, it's going to go deep enough that it's if the water bottle is a little bit smaller, it's still gonna hold pretty well. So that's exciting. And then my gusset is six inches wide. So we'll go ahead and cut a piece that is six inches wide and then kind of fold the mesh with a bit of a pleat here. So it's about an inch of unfolded and then two inches folded on itself on either side and just kind of even it out. It's mesh so no one's going to notice if it's not quite perfect. Um, so yeah, I love that. And then you just want to make sure you do that on opposite ends of that gusset piece. And then for this bottom piece, I'll probably just get a piece um, of fabric and make my own bias and I'll fold it first um, just to save a little bit of time. I cut this piece out of waterproof canvas because I don't feel like turning on my heat press to interface the cotton woven. I cut this to 1.75 inches wide. I'm gonna tape down the center and fold those long raw edges into the center. I'm gonna leave like an eighth of an inch of a gap. Not much, but just a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab some eighth inch wide double-sided tape just to hold that mesh in place while we're sewing it. Just 
to be a lot easier. So I'm going to top stitch this in the middle. And then when I sew it onto the bag, no, 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 I'll sew it on the top to make sure I'm encasing that edge nicely. And then when I attach it to the bag, I'll sew two lines, one in the middle and one at the bottom. sad if these pockets don't work well because they don't have elastic in them. I probably could use fold over elastic really quick or just sew a piece of elastic to it. No, because it really needs to be encased. If you sew through your elastic, you're kind of defeating the purpose of the elastic unless you're using like a zigzag stitch. when I do a project for myself I'm more likely to experiment um, especially since like if you're doing a custom order you're usually worried about if the customer is gonna like it or not um, but yeah it's just so much more freeing to make something for yourself I think Based all the way down. And because my exterior material is interfaced so thinly, I have to pull on the fabric as I'm sewing from the back to kind of compensate for that. Actually, I think just one row of stitching is going to be sufficient. Wow, that's huge. I'm so excited. Look how big that is. This netting is super fun. I love um, that I'm using netting for the pockets because you can see through it. <laughs> so like if you're using a really expensive print like this one for the exterior, you can still see your print. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, those strap connector pieces. These are pretty simple. I'm going to be using this webbing, one inch simple square rings. And these get placed kind of at an angle inside that rectangle. These are some of my favorite backpack strap connectors because it essentially reduces the bulk of your connector and adds a little bit more security because we can sew through this a few times, this webbing, without compromising the strength of it, especially since this backpack is finished with binding. So I love these connectors. That, and I think they kind of sit a little more comfortably too, but you just pull it out from that corner. Push out any excess. And then we'll top stitch around that. So you've got one secure line of stitching and now two secure lines of stitching. And honestly, if you wanted to, you could top stitch around that again. Um, and since your stitches won't be so close together, you're really adding a lot of strength to that connector. So I did fussy cut that one. Oh yeah, and then I want this one. But, oh man, they go opposite of each other. Oh well. It's usually best, honestly, to not try and fussy cut these pieces. Uh, but I had these cute little scraps. really made a choice by doing my nails before sewing. I'm going to grab my back panel, which is in front of me, and line these up about an inch from the bottom. So the bottom corner here, going in about an inch. Repeat that on the other side. Thank you. 
so this is going to be my last step for tonight's film session and that is the back strap getting them started i should say so i have cut this piece to be one two three about four inches wide And 18 inches long and I'm just gonna baste it on the sides to the foam and I don't want this to be one inch wide I want it to be two inches wide and then I'm gonna add a piece of webbing inside for my slide adjuster because I like a nice wide strap. So I still am not 100% sure how I act like I want to do this. Um, Cuz I'll need a finished edge, of course. But I really like how squishy this feels but I'm gonna need to add a backing to it you know what I mean so I'm not sure and we'll need to fold under the edge so I could probably um, trim down my foam so that I have a nice folded edge but honestly it's really not like it's that bulky so we could have that folded edge Clip this in, clip this in, And I do not need, so I think I kind of did a strap like this in my McFly backpack video, because I don't need the entire thing covered, you know? I don't need, I just need that center strip to be covered. So let's see what that will kind of look like. Oh, so perfect and it's a, yeah it's two inches wide which is exactly what I wanted which I'm super excited about um, but I don't think I cut this long enough to also adjust I did I think 36 inch cuts yeah I did 36 inches so I don't I don't know will it Cause that's really, it's so cute. And look at that little peak of the rainbow. But yeah, so I'll have this loop through the back. I'll put my slide adjuster on, have that loop through. It might be enough, honestly. It's just for me. Oh my gosh, that is so much. Yeah, okay, so we'll do this. And I'm just gonna base that into place. I'll tape it down. So this is just like a really lazy way of doing it. But hey, it'll it'll work. So that's that's all that matters, right? So I want to make sure I center this 
kind of using those clips as my guide. They're about half an inch there. And then I don't know if I want to top stitch this way or this way. This way I know I'm going to get it exactly where I need it, but I'm worried about how it's going to look from the front if I didn't perfectly center it, you know. But here I go. sounded low. Oh well. in while it was still looped around. Not my finest idea. Come on. So I've explained it before, but anytime I run out of bobbin, I just pull my top thread back through the machine, which probably isn't the best for it, and then reload the bobbin. And kind of line it back up. Really straighten all this back out. goodness it's so good I love it I love that puffed effect and just those three lines of stitching yeah oh my gosh I love it ah! okay so I'm just gonna kind of repeat that process on the other side hopefully I remember what I did um, but I do want to kind of angle this so I just went you know, like half an inch down on one side and cut at an angle. I think they just kind of sit more comfortably. Although I do like um, a lot of new backpack patterns coming out, have like this swoopy looking backpack strap. I think that's really cool and like very ergonomic. Um, and I'm going to can't overlap it because then this doesn't come up. You know what I mean? Oh, I can do that. No. It's got to go under? No. They just, they shouldn't be touching. That's my problem. So I won't make them touch. We'll just be at an angle off to the side. You can see, oh, it looks so good. And then this, we'll get a slide adjuster and then loop through here, and then back through the slide adjuster. And then we only have this sweet little section that will be adjustable. I'm finishing up that back panel. So I've got my slide adjuster through on the top. 
I'm gonna slide this below my D-ring. Kind of loosen the connection around the bar and then go up through the top and back down through the bottom. And then I'll probably fold that over and sew that into place. And you could also rivet if you prefer. I'm just gonna hold it together with a clip. And I like to verify that the loop is completed and it's still adjustable. And then I'll repeat that with the other side. So go above the slide bar, down the slide bar, around your square ring, and then up through the top of the slide bar underneath, and then back down below it. And then fold that over. And then I like to just verify that the strap is sitting correctly and that nothing is twisted. So it creates a nice loop, as does that side. So we're good. And so I'll go ahead and just sew a line of stitching down across that. And repeat on the other. And then I'm just trimming down all of my jump threads, etc. And you could even kind of give those a little melt with a lighter if you wanted. Next, we are working on the front panel. This is going to be a lot of steps. I probably should have just done the interior because I'm just adding a zippered pocket and a cargo slip pocket, but oh well. All right, that is our top of gusset there. Okay, so I've got my gusset piece for the zipper pocket, the lining and the exterior, and then the zipper panel for that. I have increased the width by, I think, double. I wanted this to be four inches wide. I really wanted it to be like a substantial front pocket um, just to make my life a little easier, you know? Make it a little more useful. So this top gusset piece is where I'm gonna be adding my zipper. So I want a zipper that's probably cut to about 22 inches. I've got my zipper cut and ironed, and I'm gonna add my zipper pulls. I want this to be a zipper that I can, I want it to be a double-ended zipper. Double zipper pull zipper. Anyway, I'm gonna add a zipper pull onto one end, pointing in, and then I'm gonna add a zipper pull to the other side so that they zip together. And then I'm going to work on the 
zipper panel, obviously. That's where I am. <laughs> so many pieces. It's easy to get overwhelmed. All right, so I have cut this in half. So I want to make sure that where I'm starting attaching the zipper to the panel, it will open up so that the print repeats correctly. So we'll lay this in place here. And you can use double-sided tape or clips. I'm not too worried about this nice straight piece shifting on me. So I'm just gonna use clips. And then I'm probably gonna flip this over so that my knit fabric that I'm using is on the top and doesn't like shift or warp or anything. And I can feel through to my zipper tape a little bit easier. And then I'm going to open that up and top stitch. And then you want to lay that panel to make sure the repeat will be correct and then fold it down to make your sandwich. And then I'll flip it over to attach the lining. Straighten that out. There we go. Now for the bottom part of this gusset, I'm going to put right sides together and sew along the bottom seam. I'm just going to double check that my print is going in the correct direction. I clip them at the sewing machine, not the sewing machine, at the cutting table so that they are going the direction I need them to. Never hurts to double check. Now, if you didn't want this piece to be sewn together, you could always um, cut the piece on the fold 
of the fabric instead of cutting out separate pieces. You just wanna make sure that you subtract your seam allowance from that. I'm just gonna butterfly that seam open, stitch it down nice and flat. and repeat that on the lining. Good. Okay, and then I wanna bring my zipper pulls into the seam, your gusset, your bottom gusset should be the same width as your top gusset piece. And then I think we just put right sides together because this pocket gets finished off with binding, I believe. So as long as your linings are touching and your exteriors are touching, it should be good. And then I am only going to fold down and top stitch through my exterior fabric. I find that if for some reason my lining fabric is a little bit bigger, it's easier to kind of adjust if I don't sew through the lining side. Make sure none of your fabric is twisted. And you're laying it all together. And then once again, I'm only going to top stitch through the exterior piece, making sure I've got a nice loop there. There, we're, we're good, thank goodness. All right, and now I'm going through and clipping all of these pieces together so that I can baste the gusset all together. So I started by lining up my bottom centers and then from there I'm folding out because I do think my lining is a little bit big. So what I can do to adjust for that is just fold up a little bit higher on this seam here. And once I circle around and base everything together, it won't even matter. I mean, unless it's a considerable amount, it won't make a difference. I'll baste it and then I'll repeat that on the other side. through and trim down any excess and all of those spare threads.
think I'll swing back through and top stitch. No, I'm sure it'll be okay. So then I'm going to fold this in half to find all of my centers. So the bottom centers, I already know because that's where I stitched those together. So I just need to find the top center. And I'm gonna make a little tiny snip. You could even mark it out if you would rather, but this knit fabric I'm using isn't going to fray and neither is the waterproof canvas. So I'm not too worried about those snips. And then I have this exterior piece and this lining piece. And I want to snip into those centers. Oh, ha, I already did for that piece. Go me. And then this goes on the back of that. Now, before I attach all of that, I'm wanting to add a little slip pocket into this piece. So I've cut a water resistant canvas piece to 15 inches wide by 10 inches tall and folded it in half. So I'm just gonna quickly run a line of stitch, run a line of stitching across the bottom. Pull this through. <laughs> so my stitches are coming undone there because I used a really wide stitch length. I am not worried about it because I've already cut this piece honestly longer than I need it to be. So it's not gonna be a huge, huge issue. And then I'm gonna iron this and top stitch. Okay, got that top stitched, folding it in half. creating cargo pockets by measuring one inch from the center, folding the pocket on my ruler, sliding that out, and top stitching, making sure that your top stitching is on the same side of the fabric. So then I will fold these in towards the center. I kind of line it up on my fabric. So there is my center. And I'm gonna stitch that down. Okay, well that's really slipping and sliding, isn't it? Here we go. I want it to be about an inch from the bottom. I'm going to sew that in place down the center, making sure to reinforce at the top there. And then we'll just refold that on itself and sew it in place along the bottom. I figure I may as well base it in place along the sides. 
while I'm here. And then again, I will trim down any excess fabric there. And the reason I use the water resistant canvas for that is that it doesn't get super thick and bulky when you fold it like the waterproof canvas can. So, yeah. Okay, and then we'll lay these pieces together, wrong sides together, and baste it all. Now we can start to add our gusset. So I'm gonna switch out my clips. I don't need these flat ones anymore. I need something a little stronger. And then start lining those centers up. Hopefully this isn't too big. I. Remember the last time I made this, my gusset being bigger than it needed to be. And I do want to make sure that the wider part of the gusset is touching the backpack and that the smaller part is touching the front pocket piece. Yay, it fits for the most part. Like I said, I will be finishing this part off with binding. I may use fold over elastic so that it's not super bulky like waterproof canvas can get. I want the waterproof canvas binding for the body of the bag because I want that to be nice and sturdy, you know? But for this part, I don't know that I want it to be a super shapely pocket, you know? My stitch length set to 4.5. And I'm just gonna sew in a little ways from my basting stitch. You could also use the same kind of front pocket that's on the Linsport from Lins Handmade or something. Um, if you didn't want to use like a binding method.
and then any excess I'm going to trim away. I don't want to have a super thick seam to try to add my binding over. I know the first time I made this backpack and a few others from I Think So, I was like, ew, binding. No, why? And I'm like, oh, okay. No, that's cool. We can, we can bind. It's fine. Okay. And then I just want to check the front, make sure everything looks good. It does. Thank goodness. So I'm going to grab my fold over elastic. All right, so fold over elastic has like a fuzzy side and a silky looking side. And the fuzzy side is technically the wrong side. Oh, wow. It's not very wide fold over elastic, is it? That might not work. Unless I trim it down like a lot. I guess they make wider fold over elastic. Damn. Oh, never mind on that. I'll go ahead and use this pretty pink waterproof canvas. Just go with it. I think that'll still look really pretty. It's a lot of colors in a bag. I don't know if it's for everybody, but luckily it's for me. So whatever. Probably should start in a better place than that. So you just fold it in half around your edge and make sure that the bottom side has just a little bit more under. So that way you can sew as close to the side of the binding piece as you can without risking not catching the underside. And I know it's hard um, because it doesn't have much stretch to it that in the corners it can get a little bunchy, but just kind of give it a little bit of a pull and a pinch. <laughs> Take it to dinner. Anyway. So I'm just slowly clipping. Making sure everything sets into place. I'll probably end up liking that this piece this front panel has a little bit more structure since I did make such a wide gusset. All right, and then where they meet, you could fold them together, but what I do is just kind of fold that over and overlap them. And then sew that into place. Switch my stitch length to a five.
And then this excess here, you can just trim away slowly. All right, we did it. So there is our front panel. It's huge. It's like a whole bag in itself. But if I'm gonna travel with Dorothy, etc., I wanna make sure I've got plenty of room. Massive. And then once we get it on a bag, it should look better and kind of shape nicely. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and add this zippered pocket off camera, but I'm just doing a seven inch zippered pocket for the front. I like to put um, like my lip gloss, etc. in this pocket. So I don't want it way too huge. It kind of weighs the bag down. Um, and then I want to place this in the center about one, two, three inches down from the top, I think. Oh my God, that's so huge. <laughs> Um, let's do two and a half, actually. Two and a half inches from the top is where I'm laying the piece, which means our zipper pocket is actually one, two, three and a half from the top. So that looks pretty good. So there should be plenty of distance between there and there. And I may end up trimming down this panel. I don't know. That's... Well, no, I think it's good. I think it's fine. Okay. Okay, so I'm working on getting this front piece on. What I've done is folded the edge down about half an inch, probably, around all sides of that pocket. And I went ahead and basted it on just ever so slightly about a... Uh, Honestly, probably too close to the bottom. That's like five eighths of an inch from the bottom. So probably not great. Like it's gonna be just a little too close, but what I'm doing is kind of setting it where it needs to go. And then I'm gonna trace around that area with a silver marking pen. It's gonna leave a faint mark, but it's probably gonna dissipate over time. Um, but then I'm gonna sew it in place twice. So I'll do a total of two lines of stitching, so that way I'm less likely to see any of that folded over seam. Alternatively, like I said, what you can do is cut out that section of this piece, like the lens sport, where you want it to go. You'll sew it on and then you'll attach the lining panel for it. For your zippered pocket, you want to make sure that you're folding the excess fabric up and out of the way so that you don't sew it down, making a tiny little pocket. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to undo the stitching. I thought I might, but I don't think I, I don't think I need to, but maybe I do. So this is definitely not an easy task. So I'm just trying to kind of eyeball the location of the gusket, gusket, gusset, and kind of take my ruler. I want it to be maybe an inch away from the sides. So I've got my one inch wide ruler here. So I'm gonna lay that down into place. I was even thinking I might baste it down and then kind of work on my corners and kind of just connect the stitches. But is that even an inch? Did, did I move it? Yeah, I freaking moved it. What is wrong with me? Okay. 
Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna work on getting the bottom in place and then I will attach the top. Okay. So what's nice is because I've got more of a gusset, this is a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start it down here. But it's still such a large pocket and I have a feeling no matter what I do, it's gonna look kind of crooked, but oh well. this corner to have a nice shape to it. So I'm going slow. I initially wanted to like match up that print. <clears throat> I'm thankful this print is busy enough that no one is ever going to notice these like two lines of stitching. I already tried to baste the top of this in place, but I had run out of bobbin thread. <laughs> so that didn't work. So with it still on my machine, I'm just kind of mapping out the shape of this pocket. I don't think it's going to be easy for me to do with it zipped up, but I know that's probably better to do. I should have watched my video <laughs> like before starting this and tried to remember what I messed up last time maybe. Okay, this feels good. sure my zippered pocket is completely out of the way. And I also want to make sure I don't get any weird puckers. I want to kind of make sure the distance here is the same. So it's about three inches from there to the zipper teeth. So I think we're getting a little low here. So I'll just move it up.
I'm tempted to add a little label, but I won't. Okay, I think I could probably unzip this now. So that it's a little easier to manipulate. Let's hope it looks okay. I always feel like a really good way of knowing exactly how your stitching looks is by looking at it from the back side. So we've still got that tiny little pucker there, but overall the shape looks decent. Look at that huge freaking pucker. It's got a lot of structure to it, which I'm really happy about. And I know once I add the lining of the backpack, that will too. Yay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew around that whole thing one more time. And it's not that you'd really have to, but I don't want this raw edge to really be seen. So sewing over that just one more time is just gonna really cover that. Um, and then I'm gonna add a nameplate there. That looks freaking off. Okay. So then we're gonna jump into sewing the lining. All right, so for the lining, I'm doing that cargo slip pocket situation again. For this, I've cut it to 16 by 16. I'm just gonna sew along that bottom edge. Flip it through and top stitch. And then we'll just do one inch from either side, just like we did on that front cargo pocket. It's absolutely no different. So this piece that I have added the slip pocket to, you wanna make sure that your slip pocket pieces are at the top. And I'm just gonna line up those centers and baste it all together. And it's gonna be a lot easier to stitch from the exterior side. So I'm gonna line everything up, all of my clips, so that they're towards the top. 
keep in mind that when we added that front pocket, it may have caused the front panel to shrink just a little bit. So you may need to trim down your lining just a smidge. But I've kind of combated that by using this knit fabric. The woven interfacing I used took away a little bit of the stretch, but not all of it, which is fine. Okay, there's that. And then I'm gonna set my stitch length to like a six. Base that all together. I am not going to be adding foam to this front section. Um, that would just make my seams way too bulky, make it way too hard to sew. Um, and I just don't think it's going to need that padded feeling with the binding we're using. So. If you need to, you can trim down any excess fabric, but I think we're looking pretty good. Why does that feel so crooked? Oh, my nameplate is on there. A little bit crooked. Okay. Usually you can kind of fix it by just giving it a little wiggle. Um, so for the lining on the other side, I'm just going to be adding a 10 inch zippered pocket, um, a fairly large depth. I think I cut this to like 12 inches by 11 inches. So I'm just folded it in half and I'm going to grab my 10 inch zipper pocket ruler, lay that in place, trace that out. And then I am not going to be turning the bag through this pocket, so I don't need to worry about leaving it open. pocket a million times so I'm gonna finish this off camera and then next step is taking our back panel and our back lining panel and lining up the center snips and this one I can do from the top side although it really doesn't matter I think my biggest regret is using the lining fabric for this um, upper piece. I think once it's all together, it'll look nice, but right now it just feels like... So with that basting, we're adding a second line of security to our strap connectors. So it's a good idea to use something that won't perforate for those connectors. Like if you were to make this out of vinyl or something, sewing over them this many times could actually perforate it, causing it to be weaker, and we do not want that. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna kind of clip these together so that there is absolutely no risk of anything getting caught in the seam allowance. You just, you never know. Oh, no. I was gonna say, I might be able to tuck them into this back slip pocket, but oh man, everything is feeling so good right now. I'm so excited. I was tempted to add a cut and sewn by hand label on here, but I'm just not sure like if it'll clash or look weird. I have these that are just so pretty. These are all from the Heartwood and Hide. And she hand paints them. So she hand painted these for me. They're absolutely perfect. They're glittery and everything. Hmm. I feel like if I was going to add it, I should have already because it's going to show up on the lining side. But again, it's for me, so I don't care. But I'm going to pass for now. Um, and then we're going to work on our zipper panel. This is pretty easy. Um, it's just like the gusset zipper panel that we added to that big front pocket. Um, I did change this from the pattern to make it a gusset. And I want my smaller piece, I've cut it to two inches and then I've got, I believe four inches, one, two, three, three and a half or something. Maybe I cut like 1.75 and I've got like 3.25 there or something, but, oh, crap. <laughs> okay, make sure we add a clip there. <laughs> I wanted to create a panel instead of just attaching the zipper um, so it would be a little bit easier to add binding. Wow, why is that so much shorter? And why is that so much wider? Okay. Got a piece that's way longer than I need it to be, but I'd rather that than too short. to steam that open and toss it. necessary to keep straight because you can't see much of the print anyway at least for what I'm using I should say so you still want to try if you can
get to attach the exterior piece to the panel. And yes, I have cut my lining way too big, sort of on purpose. So I'm just going to first baste this together. And then I'm gonna attach that lining piece. line that up. Once I top stitch all of the layers together, I'm just going to trim off all the excess around that zipper panel. I'm so sad. I have to go pick up my parents from the airport, so I won't get to finish this. At least not right now, but I'm really excited with how it's looking. All right, so make sure that this doesn't get flipped or twisted. Make sure you bring your zipper pulls in. And I'll lay those together and baste. And then again with the lining, make sure you're creating this nice continuous loop. And then I am top stitching only through the exterior. Well, technically it's through all the panels, but keeping everything else out of the way. So then I will line up the center of that lining piece with the center of the exterior. And I'm going to clip that into place. And then fold this edge down and clip everything together. Okay, so I have my gusset piece all clipped together. So we're just going to start by basting all of those layers together. Nice and slow. want to make sure you're going at a steady pace not too fast that things start to buckle and pucker weird and right here I want to go and take that extra precaution so that nothing works
And now what I will need to do is just trim off all of the excess. And you may decide you want to trim it down to a more consistent um, like basting stitch away from the outer edge, etc. I think we'll be okay. Making sure you trim down the excess threads too, otherwise those just get kind of caught within a seam since it's exposed edges until we add the binding. These extra little pieces. All right, we're getting so close to the end. So I'm going to take my gusset, clip the side panels, making sure they line up nicely. And then from there, I can clip or fold all the way up to find the centers here. just a little snip into that seam allowance. I'm going to grab my front panel first. I'm going to grab the front panel first because I want the shorter piece to be attached to the front. I'm pretty sure I want that. Yeah, I want that. I don't want to have to open. Yeah. Okay, so I'm clipping to the top just before we get to the curve. And then I want to fold this down and around. Making sure there's no weird um, looping or anything like that, making sure all of those layers are nice and straight. Not twisted. Twisted was the word I was looking for. It's been a long week. All right, and then I've got these mesh side pockets here and I wanna make sure I don't catch any of that mesh in the seam causing it to be smaller or damaged, you know? Perfect. And then this is where I always have the most trouble is like, do I want to sew the curve of the bag or do I want to try and sew it flat? I always change my mind about it too. It's never consistent. So my side pockets are a little bit tall, I think, or I made them a little bit too long. I don't think it'll be too big of an issue though. They're just past the, you know, you can kind of see that. They're just a little too long. I had a feeling that would happen. So yeah, I think I'm gonna sew in the round of this. I think that's gonna prevent 
any puckering and give me the best outcome. What's nice is it's a really big curve, um, so it's not going to be too tricky either way. Um, but then adding binding is going to be a lot easier. But that is what the front of the bag looks like. I'm so excited. And then I want to come in just a little ways past my initial basting stitch. And then if need be, I'll add more clips into those curves as I'm going. And then leave my needle in and just slowly adjust it. This can be done if you're really good, um, kind of all in one step. Like you can just continue on with it if you're not trying to talk through it. But you can have like an arm over here, your elbow up in the air. Just kind of carry it through. But you gotta, there's a lot of moving parts. Before I continue, oh, I think I'm past it. I was, oh, I was gonna say, I'm just gonna double check that my pocket is out of the seam. It looks good. And then we can check from the front and make sure we've caught all of those basting stitches. Make sure all of the seams were caught. What are you? Oh, looks like I ran out of bobbin or something at one point. to stop here. Although it's not very usable as a backpack at the moment. Is it? So I'm not sure if I want to add binding tonight or like just get it done using it and add binding another day because I'm just so excited. But like, look at the inside. It, it's sad. It needs binding. <sighs> so I'll go ahead and grab my binding I like to do it as I go. That way it's not like, oh, now I gotta do all the binding. So I'm just gonna flip this back through. Hopefully this binding is big enough. I think it might just barely be big enough. Okay. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. And then just like on that other piece, you're gonna fold it over the edge, making sure to have a little bit more along the bottom side. If you need to, you can see my corner has a lot of extra fabric. Just give it a little trim.
Almost got you. hard when you're trimming down the seam allowances because you don't want to go too far that then you're creating a whole new line of stitching making the exterior look a little strange in that area but you also don't want it to have too much fabric in there that you're not even covering your basting stitches and your construction stitch I may have said this in the first Elena video I did, but I would never make this bag to sell personally um, because it took me probably, I, I cut it out over two days, but maybe it took me three hours to cut an interface and I was going slow. I was watching a ton of videos about Encanto because it's all consuming at the moment. Um, it's fascinating. Oh, I think we're gonna have just enough. Okay, good. Um, but yeah, it just takes way too long to put together. It's so large, it takes so, so many materials. It's not a lot of hardware, which is good. And I bet if you are much quicker at sewing such big things and you're really good at adding binding, I bet you could get it done. But I think sewing this has taken three hours. It's mostly just the sheer size of it. So the next panel I will show me sewing it on, but I'm not going to show me adding the binding just because this takes forever. Oh. Okay. I love all the colors together. Uh, ha, oh. Not today, Bobbin. Oh, ugh. sorry, Bobbin. Case. I knew it sounded a little low. should have added a few more clips. Um, I believe you could also use like double-sided tape to help you with binding attachment.
Okay, time for the back panel. So I wanna make sure top and top, line those up at the center mark. This backpack is huge. I'm so used to making mini backpacks and stuff like that. Now this side has a lot more to it. So I almost feel like I might sew this one in the fl like flat. So with the bottom down, because otherwise I'm having to maneuver a lot of stuff. She thick, especially right here. I've got two layers of foam. Luckily, it's just a small section that it's double foam, but like thick. I forgot to line up the bottom. There we go. Okay, make sure that pocket fabric is out of the way. I am gonna cut down this corner here because my basting stitch is that like five eighths of an inch. Same with over here. So there's no way I could cover that with binding unless I trim it down. Now. And if you need to very gently clip into the corners of that curve to help it sit a little bit better, you can do that. Just make sure you don't go in past the seam allowance or too far that you can't cover it with the binding. Just the way this shape is coming together like it wants to be in the round, but we're not doing it. Okay, I'm gonna unzip it. And I can do that easily by just pushing on the zipper. One thing I really like about this backpack is it doesn't open super wide, but you could easily adjust and make a longer zipper if you wanted to. Go ahead and start up here.
Okay, so now I just need to add the binding. Like I said, I'll do that off camera. So next you'll see is me flipping the bag right side out and oogling it. So you can see here, my seam allowance got pretty far. So we're gonna trim that down as well. Cause I will not be able to cover that. Another thing, I really can't. I was gonna say, I might try to cut the foam out of this seam, but it's really wedged in there. So it's a little far over here. And up the top. But other than that, I think we're good. I hope I love it. I hope I didn't mess it up. Okay. So binding fully attached. I was like, why is my strap so clipped? Pockets look great. So pushing along all of the seams. Oh my gosh, this thing is massive. Like my other one doesn't seem this big. Okay, take these clips off. The straps are so soft. This front pocket is seriously like its own purse. Why do I keep doing this? I make these giant bags that I'm like, wait, why did I do that? But yeah, I, okay, let's, here's the grab handle. Does it look lopsided? No, no. I love these straps. Oh, there we go. Okay, hold on. Okay, so here is the finished backpack. I love it. Seriously though, these straps are so soft. They might be actually like a little bit too long. And I kind of wish I had made these longer. I cut them to 18 inches. But I think maybe even like 24 and just had like a really small adjustable spot. Because it's right in my pits. But I love it. Okay, so I thought it would be fun for you to see. This is the one I made four years ago. Um, I remember talking to Nikki during the live video of me making this about these straps because I followed the pattern instructions, but like it's, it's not right. So it always loosens because they're not like actual locking slide adjusters. This is the way the front zipper should be attached according to the pattern, but it leaves this raw edge here that I didn't want. Um, but I did love this backpack a lot. I used it all the time. I mean, I still do love this backpack. I'm not getting rid of it by any means, but we definitely made some improvements. I love these fun pulls I added. I had so much fun. Um, and I actually made this out of a skirt that I didn't like the way it felt. So here is this one. Oh my god, this thing is huge compared to this one. I mean, 
they're both huge, but I guess the other one has some slouch to it. Um, this is the width of that panel, which is sewn on the exact same way versus the width of this panel. So it's quite, what? What? What do you want? This is good. Um, so yeah, these side pockets are going to be great for holding water bottles and toys and whatnot. I think I made the front zipper pocket a little bit smaller, but it's deeper. So that'll be nice. And then here is that front section. So that'll hold a lot of snacks and or Dorothy toys. And then of course this back slip pocket that I can put my iPad into. It's safe on my back, but during um, like TSA, I can just pull it out. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this little comparison of the old one to the new one, and I will see you in my next one.